watching some vintage sex ed films again today. You all loved the Christian sex ed video so much. Well, some of you didn't love it. <laughs> okay, I'm over it. Let's watch a video. This is a jam. I don't know if we'll be able to include it because it's probably gonna get copyright claimed, but. That had to be on purpose, right? Look at this. She's carrying a magazine. It says smash. There's no way that wasn't on purpose. I already appreciate this. If for only the humor alone, and if it was unintentional, that's even better. They did it again in that shot and she's covering up the hits with her hand. <laughs> I love it. I don't really like the four girls or four boys. I think sex ed should just be sex ed. I do understand why you would teach it potentially separated. Sometimes kids are more likely to ask questions because they don't feel as judged by their opposite gender counterparts. But overall, I think the same topics at minimum should be taught and a lot of sex ed should be done just like any normal health education would be done, not separating people. I'm Angela. And over the next few sessions, we're going to be together talking about you growing up, your body, its changes, and a lot more. Hi, Angela. This is great. I'm really excited, actually. Uh, I do have one issue. What is that doll in the back? I don't know if that doll is supposed to represent the Antichrist or an angel or something in between, but it freaks me out and so does its little friend. I cannot learn sex ed while looking at them. It it looks like Coraline and it's freaking me out. You're not sewing buttons in my eyes! I think you're going to find it fascinating. Everything is based on love. And the person who loves us most of all is God. And second most of all is Coraline. So let's start by asking him to help us to understand about it all. Dear Lord, She's going to start sex ed with a prayer, which I can't fault her. It is a religious video. Not my personal choice of how to start sex ed most of the time, but you know, everybody should do what is, what is best for them. I want to invite you to be with us as we talk together about growing up because you are the inventor of people. I can't stop pausing. What is this illustration? <laughs> Where is the rest of her head? <laughs> so this is the newlywed couple here. And they're And why is that little girl in the corner? It's Coraline. She's everywhere. Showing their love for each other by love making. Just means making each other feel loved. I don't think love making generally means making every each other feel loved. Like if I said, ah, oh, you know, I'm just engaging with a little love making. I don't think you would think I meant I was just telling my husband I loved him. Could be wrong. Maybe I need to look in Urban Dictionary. How do you make a person feel loved? Well, you give them kisses and hugs and you hold them close. But between a man and a woman, it's a bit different. Because when they hold each other really close and give a long kiss, and a warm hug. They tell each other that they're beautiful and everything like that. I'm not laughing at her. She's doing an excellent job for the most part. I just can't get over that altar picture. Exact replication of my own wedding photo and Coraline was also at my wedding. Huh, a little me? They also have a bit of a laugh because they are the best of friends. And then something happens. In a very short time, because they're so close, the man feels his penis becoming erect. That's straight, hard. If I was a kid listening to this, I'd be like, whoa, Angela, you went from skirting around lovemaking and colloquialisms and Coraline at the altar with her f 
friend that has no top of their head. And then you went straight into the penis is erect. That's going to freak me out if I'm a 10 year old. In general, so far the video is fine, but I would say don't just like skirt around it and then dive in. You're going to freak them out. Talk about, you know, people have sex. If you are in a relationship, a loving relationship, and both of you agree that you want to have sex, then you will decide to do that and you do it together. And then you say, so sex is how babies are made. It's also used purely for pleasure. Let's talk about how sex happens. Then you can go into penis being erect, but you have a lot of 10 or 11 year old girls who are freaking out a little bit right now. And the sperm coming down into it, like it did when he had a wet dream. Now, while the sperm is coming into the man's penis, the woman's body is getting ready to receive the sperm. It's amazing, you know, how God made it. Because while they're making love and being happy together, the woman feels her vagina becoming kind of slippery inside so that the penis can easily slip in and out. No trouble. So he slips his penis into her vagina, gives her the sperm, then she has the sperm. Then the penis slips out and that's all. Overall, I appreciate that uh, description. It was actually quite good. That would be a very good like first step into the mechanics of what is sex for a preteen. The visual is killing me and I don't like it. So Angela, I'm, g I'm gonna have to ask you to not do the visual. We can all just think it in our brains. And that's called sexual intercourse. Some people call it having sex. So the man passes the sperm to the woman and now his sperm is in her. Maybe you're wondering if a mistake could be made and a man could pass water instead of semen and sperm when having sexual intercourse. Reasonable concern. That can't happen because there's a valve which closes to stop the urine coming when sexual intercourse is taking place. Possibly you're saying to yourself, oh, I'll never do that, it's awful. Because you know, when you hear about it first, it sounds very strange, but God has made it really lovely. It is kind of strange. That's what I would tell my kids is like, you probably think this sounds a little strange and it, it, it is a little strange. I mean, if you really think about it, it's kind of weird, but you know, we're humans, it's how it works. It's what we do, it's fine. Everybody, most everybody over the course of their life will do it. So might as well know how it happens and what it means. I think the best thing you can do is just to honestly answer your kids' questions as they ask them growing up, because you don't want it to ever be where you've skirted around the issue, you've said things like lovemaking and colloquialisms and special hugs and fitting together and stuff. And you know, then one day you suddenly go- And then their penis is erect. That's jarring. So just answer the questions gradually as kids get older. I think that we have to move away from our knee jerk to like, oh, you're too young to know about that. Oh, ask your dad. Oh, ask me later, oh, you know, and just answer the question. And a lot of times the question that they ask will be plenty. So how are babies made? Well, a sperm and an egg get together. For a while, that's all my kids needed. They got a little older and then one of them was like, what is a sperm? What is an egg? Or how do they get there? And how do they get together? And then as they ask questions, you answer them. All of that to say, Answer your kids' questions honestly over time from the time that they can talk. Don't lie to them, don't put them off. I promise sometimes it's as easy as the mom and dad had sex and then the mom got pregnant. And then for a while, they may not even ask, what is sex? So does that make sense? In the last lesson, you'll remember, I spoke to you about your heart growing up. <sighs> this is the light that only responds to violence. In the last lesson, you'll remember, I spoke to you about your heart growing up. Remember? Now I'm going to talk to you about your body growing up. Maybe you'll laugh when I mention that because you may feel quite shy about it. Anyway, let's be quite open about it. With a girl, down between her legs, there are three openings. You use the front opening when you go to the toilet and pass water. And the back opening is for when you go to the toilet and do the big job. And there's a center opening between those two, which is called the vagina. Okay, great. Start with the basics of anatomy. I love it. And I will take issue with one part, which is, can we just use the names for everything? So urethra in the front, where pee comes from, 
anus in the back where poop comes from and vagina in the middle where when you have periods, menstrual blood comes from and also sex, which we're going to talk about in this video. That would be my preferred. But again, I am nitpicking because so far this is decent <laughs> if you ignore the 80s part of it, which, you know, hard to ignore. Now, today we're going to look at the boys. Do you like that? I spoke too soon. Why would she say that? Do you like that? We were all doing really good and you just, you, you went and made it weird, Angela. Unlike girls, boys have their sexual organs on the outside of their bodies. They have the penis, which is like a little tube. And some people- <laughs> Like a little tube. <laughs> Sorry guys. We call the penis funny names like John Willie or something, but we call it its real name, penis. Love Sometimes it. when you're married first, you do it a bit awkwardly and then you have to laugh together because you, you don't know everything yet, but you learn together. It's very automatic and natural and happy. And the couple might try it in a different position and one might say to the other, oh, that's a much better way. That's much more comfortable. It sounds very strange. Okay, I would argue sex is not always very automatic, natural, or happy, it can be frustrating, it can be happy, it can be weird, it can be silly, it can be many bad things if you take it out of a context of consensual intercourse, but I don't like that they're presenting it as like, it's always just real straightforward and, you know, I mean, I guess she didn't exactly do that. She said sometimes it's, you'll take some time to figure it out. Uh, and I do like that they're promoting communication with your partner and, you know, that things don't have to be perfect each time. But that last phrase there kind of sets people's expectations a bit higher than I would prefer. Hi, it's Monday and I just uploaded this, but it's gonna be late because the next clip, the piano music in the background got copyright claimed and they didn't just make me take that part out. They were gonna block the entire video from being uploaded and seen. So I'm gonna do a voiceover for Angela in the next clip. When you're joined together like one person and you love each other so much, he has made it a really lovely feeling. I mean, supposing God made it an awful feeling, then nobody would do it. And we wouldn't have any babies. But he's made it this special, exciting feeling. So much so, people are tempted to do it before they're married. Well, that's just a normal human temptation. But God doesn't want people to have sexual intercourse before they're married illegal. Don't have sex, you will get pregnant, and die. Don't have sex in the missionary position, don't have sex standing up. Just don't do it, promise? And you remember he's the inventor and he knows what's best. Overall, I think this video gets an A plus in comparison to other videos that we've watched. Certainly, it gets about a C in comparison to my preference for how we should do sex ed. A lot of you have asked me if I could make a video about talking to your kids about sex or resources and things like that, and I, I certainly can at some point, but I also find it difficult because I think this is such a broad topic. I believe that sex ed should start with learning names of body parts when you are very young and should be a progressive thing over time. So obviously that's hard to make a video on because I, I mean, I guess if I had a whole production team, we could start like with the basics and do an age progression over time and, you know, videos to supplement health classes. I would love to do that. I think it would be a huge undertaking, at least in how I envision it, for what comprehensive sex ed should be. If you're a parent and you're trying to navigate these waters as your kids get a little bit older, my best piece of advice is just answer your kids' questions honestly. The biggest thing is you just want them comfortable asking you questions. And if from the time they're able to start asking questions, you put them off or project your nervousness or uncomfortableness to them when they ask questions about their body or sex or the other gender, the other sex, you know, how babies are made, how they get out, things like this, they're going to pick up on that and that's going to tell them subconsciously, okay, I'm not allowed to ask mom questions about this. And that's what you don't want. So answer their questions honestly. If they're old enough to be asking, they're old enough to have an answer and don't get too detailed. Just answer what they ask. And then if they need more detail, they will tell you. But the quickest way to stop conversation is to 
get overly detailed in your explanation, which hello, I have a problem with that. So something I, I am working on too. We can do this. We can have the talk over time, not all at once, not making people feel weird. Just answer the questions they have. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I'll see you next Monday.